This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 2301 statics. We've got a bodies of revolution problem and a fluid pressure problem from recent exam. Problem number one, shown up here on the top half of the board, is a symmetric shape composed of two half circles on top of a rectangle. And that's key to the making the solution a little bit faster, a lot a bit faster. Knowing that it's symmetric, we know that the center of gravity is right here in the middle of it. I have it has two axes of symmetry, vertical and horizontal, through its centroid. And so the problem, first problem was determine the surface area of the body of revolution, which you rotate this thing one revolution, one complete revolution about the x-axis. So you're going to get sort of a donut shaped thing. And the formula from the equation sheet is the area of revolution is theta RL. Where theta is the uh, number of revolutions in radians. For this case it's going to be 2 pi, one complete circle. The distance r is the perpendicular distance to the axis that you're rotating about, which is the x-axis, so it's a y distance, ry. I've computed the distance to the centroid as this 1 inch plus 6 inch, the radius of the half circle, plus half of the height of the rectangle, 17, divided by 2. Gives me 15.5 inches. And the key thing on these surface area problems is this L, the length of the line. I'm not concerned with the area, I'm concerned with the length of the line and it's really the perimeter of the shape. So I've got two half circles which uh, the circumference of a circle is pi d half of a circle is pi r and I've got two of them so the length is 2 pi times 6 that covers the half circles plus I've got two sides that are 17 inches long, just straight lines. Makes a total of 71.7 inches. Do all the math. Note that I've got inches times inches times radians, which are dimensionless, and I come up with 69.83 square inches, which, which is what I want for a surface area. Uh, part number two was determine the volume of body of revolution, V rev for one half revolution about the y-axis. So with V-Rev the formula is very similar. I've got theta R A in this case. A, the area of the section that I'm revolving, and I'm revolving about the y-axis so I need that x distance. So theta is going to be pi radians, only half a revolution. Rx is 6 plus 6 inches, the radius of the circles. 12 inches total. The area is, the area of a half circle is pi r squared over 2, and I've got two of them, so that's this number, plus the area of this rectangle, which is, it's 12 inches wide, twice the radius, times 17 tall, it's 317.1 inches squared. Do all the math, and I come up with 11,950 inches cubed which once again the units work out. I've got inches times inches squared comes up with inches cubed which is what a volume is. Pretty simple problem because with these problems I'm concerned with what's the center of gravity, the centroid. The second part, was, second problem was a fluid pressure problem. I had a dam with some uh, dimensions given. The slope of the sloping surface is a 724 which means the hypotenuse is 25. And I was told that the dam is 50 feet wide, which comes into play in my answer, and it retains a liquid with a specific weight of 65 pounds per cubic foot. Okay, so I really have kind of a lot of geometry in this, involved in this, so I need similar triangles to determine what length the surface of the uh, fluid pressure is going to be exerted on and I needed to know the height of this portion right here because in part number three I'm asked for the pressure at point A. So by similar triangles if I have a 724 slope 
I can figure out the length of the uh, the horizontal part of the sloping portion, which is 20 minus or 56 minus 20 it gives me 36 feet down here. Similar triangle shows me that the height of this um, sloping part is by similar triangles this relationship that height is 10.5 feet and the length of that is the square root of the sum of the squares 10.5 squared plus 36 squared or 37.5 is the length of the sloping surface so I'm going to use that as I do the solution the pressure at A we're given on the equation sheet the pressure at any point is just gamma times Z the depth from the surface so at A the Z distance is 15 feet the total height of the liquid minus 10.5 feet the height of the vertical portion of the slope 4.5 feet so it's a real easy answer 4.5 times 65 gives me 292.5 similarly the pressure at B here at the bottom is just the depth of the, the liquid 15 feet times 65 975 pounds per square foot units are really helpful in these uh, pressure problems fluid pressure feet times pounds per cubic foot gives me pounds per square foot which is what I want for a pressure finally number five I want another resultant force FR on the sloping surface so what I've got is really just a distributed load problem the quick and easy way is just to here's the, the pressure at A 292.5 the pressure at B 975 the area of a trapezoid is what that resultant force is. I'll solve it here differently down here below, but the area of a trapezoid's base times the average height, 292.5 plus 975 divided by 2, 23,765 pounds per foot. Now, sometimes I wanted to know that number, pounds per foot of width of the dam. On this test, we wanted to know the total force, so I needed to multiply by the width of the dam 50 feet. So I've got 50 times that number gives me 1,188,000 pounds or 1188 kips. So you got to look at how the answers, multiple choice answers are given to you and think about what you're doing and look at your units. Finally, we didn't ask this on the test. We could have, uh, we should could have asked for the location X bar from some point, in this case from the bottom, from point B, where that resultant force acts. So in this case, I just once again have a distributed load problem. I need to figure X tilde and F, and here I do the work. I divide that trapezoid shape into up into a rectangle with the red FR and the triangle in the blue FT. So the force of the triangle per foot, once again, is one half base times height. Here's the numbers. It acts one third from the big end, and the length of that is 37.5 feet. So 37.5 divided by three, till it gives me x tilde f, which is this number, 159,960. Similarly, for the rectangle, <coughs> its area is 37.5 by 292.5, this number. By the way, I can add those two numbers up, and they should equal, and they do, the area of the trapezoid computed in a slightly different way. Once again, it's pounds per foot. The next tilde F for the rectangle, it's right in the middle of that 37.5, because it's a rectangle. I get this number for X tilde F, R. Add them up. And then X bar is going to be that number divided by the total force per foot, 23,765. I get 15.39 feet from B.